Looking for the latest information on the data science hiring market but don't have time for an hour-long webinar? This recap video will cover the top highlights from our 2018 Data Science Salary Study. Reviewing the data and trends this year made it clear just how much has changed. New tools and technologies continually become available, and the use of data science is spreading into more areas and applications. Companies are using the data to either disrupt their competitors or disrupt an entire industry. Not surprisingly, more professionals are transitioning into the field, including those fresh out of school or switching from another career field. Despite this interest, it's still hard for companies to find more experienced data science talent. We've also continued to see the convergence of the traditional analytics fields with data science. This is impacting everything from the educational backgrounds of data scientists to salaries and hiring requirements. This video shares insights from our fifth annual data science salary study. We'll be sharing highlights from the report, but if you want more information, the full report can be downloaded for free at birchworks.com slash study. Today we'll look at how we define and identify data scientists, the typical demographic profile, salary data and trends, other noteworthy findings, and some predictions on where this is all headed. So before we dive into the data, let's quickly review how Birchworks identifies data scientists. There are a lot of definitions out there, so we wanted to share ours up front for clarity. At Birchworks, we think about data scientists and predictive analytics professionals as two groups. Both are able to analyze data, glean insights, and prescribe action. Both have quantitative skills like modeling, etc. But data scientists focus on using unstructured or streaming data, while predictive analysts use structured data. As a result, data scientists will typically have more comprehensive computer science training and deeper coding skills. As the two areas continue to blur, we'll be keeping an eye on this distinction. Most data scientists will have a master's or PhD in a quantitative or computer science oriented field like math, statistics, computer science, or engineering. Some may also have experience with a boot camp or MOOCs like Coursera. These are just some of the tools that we see data scientists using. Data scientists are typically able to cover the entire analytical lifecycle from data extraction to analysis to visualization and insights and more. As we define them, data scientists do not include software developers, traditional predictive modelers, data engineers, MBAs, BA, or IT folks. Let's dig into the typical demographic profile. Birchworks does not ask the age of professionals that we work with, but we do ask for years' experience. As you can see, there are a lot more professionals jumping in at the junior end, while experienced talent is harder to find. 48% of data scientists have a PhD, and another 43% have a master's degree. When you compare data scientists to others in predictive analytics, there is a much higher prevalence of PhDs. About 48% of data scientists hold a PhD, while only 17% of those in analytics do. Popular fields of study for data scientists include math and statistics, computer science, natural sciences like physics, and engineering. 38% of data scientists are foreign born, either permanent residents or on some sort of visa, such as an H-1B, F-1, or OPT or another visa. Among early career individual contributors, it's even more likely that data science candidates will need visa support if you're looking to hire them. 40% of data scientists live on the West Coast, and another 26% live in the Northeast. In 2016, the West Coast and Northeast accounted for 71% of data scientists, and two years later, it's 66% in 2018. So there has been some movement to the Middle U.S. region. Technology firms still continue to be the largest employers of data scientists at over 40%. However, use cases for data science are expanding and new industries are hopping on the bandwagon. 15% of data scientists are women, which has remained fairly steady. 
Among early career professionals, 22% are women, which dropped to 10% among executive leaders. And now we'll dive into the compensation trends. For the most part, data science salaries appear to be staying fairly level. Salaries only shifted by single digit percentage points, and the largest increase was for, was for professionals with nine or more years experience. Manager salaries have leveled off for now, with lower and mid-level managers both decreasing by 3% and executive level salaries unchanged. For the long-term compensation trends, as you can see, individual contributors with one to three years experience saw the largest gains a few years ago, but has since leveled off. As more people have transitioned into the data science field, it has had a flattening impact on salaries for early career data scientists. Right now, data scientists with four to 10 years of experience are in demand and hard for companies to hire, so those salaries have continued to increase. Here's the long-term salary trend for managers. As you can see, salaries among managers have shifted slightly here and there, but for the most part have remained flat. Here you can see the comparison of salaries between data scientists who work with unstructured data versus predictive analytics professionals that focus on structured data. There can be quite a difference between the two. Here are some additional trends we found. Here's the geographic spread of salaries among individual contributors with four to eight years experience. Historically, our studies have consistently shown that data scientists on the West Coast and in the Northeast tend to earn higher salaries. West Coast salaries are typically highest since it includes Silicon Valley, but the Northeast is catching up a bit. As data science has been spreading to include Wall Street and FinTech firms in New York City and growing tech hubs in Boston and Washington, D.C., the gap between the two coasts has narrowed. The salary disparity between data scientists and tech versus other industries also decreased. Data science was often concentrated at tech giants like Facebook, Apple, Netflix, and Google on the West Coast, but today we're seeing tech grow into other areas like Denver, Chicago, or Austin. The salaries there are not as high as some of the tech firms in San Francisco. We're also seeing more legacy corporations in industries such as retail, CPG, or industrial competing for talent and getting more aggressive with compensation. Here we're looking at the salaries of high-level individual contributors versus lower and mid-level managers. As you can see, management is not necessarily required for high salaries. This is something that's fairly unique. A data scientist can earn a high salary regardless of whether they become a manager or not. This is in contrast to other business fields where professionals will often reach a salary stagnation point where you need to become a mad manager to move past it. One trend that has remained consistent is that data scientists with a PhD tend to earn more than those with a master's. We've gone through a lot of data, so I wanted to quickly recap some of the highlights for you. 48% of data scientists hold PhDs, while 43% hold a master's. 66% work and live on the west or northeast coasts. 44% are employed by tech companies. 38% are permanent residents or on a visa. 15% are female. And 72% have 10 years or less experience. And here is a quick recap of the salary insights we found. Base salaries shifted only by single-digit percentage points. Data scientists out-earn others in analytics. Highest salaries are paid on the coasts, and tech data scientists earn more. And PhDs earn higher salaries. Now, after all this trend analyzing and sifting through data, I'd be remiss if we didn't offer you just a few predictions about where we think this is all headed. Prediction number one, the push for I ROI will hound both legacy firms and startups. Substantial investment has been poured into data science. Traditional organizations are collecting massive amounts of unstructured data, and startups are looking to use data in new ways to disrupt industries or introduce new products. In both cases, pressure is getting higher for data science teams to deliver returns on their significant promises. Number two, specialists will become the norm instead of unicorns. 
In years past, many data scientists would oversee every aspect of the analytical life cycle. Now that many teams have grown, we've seen an increase in demand for data science specialists in areas such as natural language processing or image processing. Some firms may still look for generalists if they need a wide range of skills, but whereas hiring unicorns with broad skill sets used to be the norm in data science, now we're starting to see an increase in requests for specialists. Prediction 3, the hands-on component will be essential to leadership. In a field that evolves so quickly and where leaders are often expected to exhibit a player-coach mentality, remaining hands-on with the data is the best way to stay current with new tools and technologies. Data scientists who find themselves straying too far away from technical work may quickly find their skills out of date and unmarketable in today's climate. And even for senior leaders, it's important to keep your technical skills sharp. Over the years, we've pointed to several trends that show how data science is spreading beyond its original borders. Many predictive analytics professionals have begun to transition their skills into data science roles. Data science is no longer limited to giant tech firms and startups on the coast, and more people are getting into the data science profession. These changes have not only had a flattening effect on some salary disparities, but it has also led to increased opportunities for both data scientists looking to live somewhere besides Silicon Valley and for firms outside of the West Coast. We accept, expect to see more industry shifts on the horizon. We've shared a lot of information today, but if you're looking for more, this, there is tons more data to be found in our full report. It can be downloaded for free at birchworks.com slash study, and it will give you demographic details, detailed salary breakouts for all job levels, and analyzed by factors like region, education, and more. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, Birchworks is an executive recruiting firm specializing in quantitative areas such as data science, predictive analytics, and marketing research, among others. We're the leading resource for this type of talent and for insights about the hiring market and we produce three comprehensive salary reports every year, which can be downloaded for free at birchworks.com study. And this year, Birchworks is also proud to have been recognized by Forbes as one of America's best recruiting firms. Looking to add to your data science staff, we offer contingency and retained services, from entry-level data scientists all the way up to chief data scientist searches. Feel free to send an email to info at birchworks.com if you want to brainstorm. Whether you want to post a job or look at new opportunities for yourself, you can check out our job board, which is trafficked by thousands of quantitative professionals. If you're looking for more insights on the analytics and data science hiring market, check out birchworks.com blog for more trend analysis, career advice, and flash survey results, including our hugely popular SAS versus R versus Python flash survey. You can also follow Virtworks on social media to stay up to date and check out the other videos on our YouTube channel. Visit www.virtworks.com study to download our full report. And if you want to connect with us, you can email info at Thank you so much for joining us today.